Good evening, this beautiful day that the Lord has made. Let's praise him and thank him for our salvation. Do you remember that song you maybe learned in Sunday school? Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me him again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to Thank you, Jesus. We can't thank you enough, Father. Thank you for your plan of salvation. When we went astray, you already had a plan. You knew that we would not be obedient. You knew that there would come a time when you would, you would have to send your only begotten Son to pay the price for judgment that should come upon us. But Jesus took it in his body. Thank you, Father. Thank you for restoring us. Thank you that one day we will see Jesus face to face and we can bow down and worship him and tell him thank you. Thank you for dying on that cross and forgiving us of our sin. Thank you, Jesus, for paving the way and making a way for us to have eternal life and to be with you forever. We can't thank you enough. And thank you, Father, that those of us that are born again were filled with your Spirit so that we can do your work here on earth. We can tell others the good news. And Father, this afternoon, anoint Pastor Buck with a message of encouragement, a message of salvation for all of us. Forgive us, Father, for the way we go astray. We go after our own thinking, our own ways. We thank you, though, for your spirit, Father, that draws us back to yourself and shows us the pathway we need to take. Thank you, Father. We can't thank you enough. And, Father, thank you for the word of God that directs our paths, that gives us, gives us a foundation that we can stand on and trust and believe. Thank you for the truth. Thank you for Jesus who is the way, the truth, and the life and the only way. You said he's the only way to yourself. Thank you, Father. We praise you and give you all honor and glory. And Father, I lift up all my brothers and sisters who are listening. I pray for them to be encouraged and strengthened. I pray for your healing hand to be upon them. I pray for salvation for their relatives, their loved ones, sons and daughters. Might they come into the kingdom. Oh, Father, use my brothers and sisters mightily. Show forth your glory in their lives. In Jesus' precious name. And everybody said... Amen. Why do I have a hat on tonight? Because it's a little windy. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> oh, it is so good to be with you today. And we're out here on our deck. And as you can see, the mountains are so beautiful today. We do have a strong breeze. But I was watching a couple eagles as they would fly down into the one of the valleys of the mountains and soar back up. And I thought, you know, I want to be like an eagle. I want to soar to the highest of heights 
that I can in my Christian walk with Jesus. Amen. And today I, I've just got it in my spirit. Uh, there's a, a place across the hill uh, on the si same side of the mountain that I sang this song. Uh, one of my dear friends that went to be with the Lord, I sung this song and we scattered his ashes on the mountain over there. And uh, I was thinking today, I just want to sing this again. And I pray, I pray that you'll understand that we have mountains to climb and we have valleys to go through. But I want to say this, you know, without the valleys, without the times of, of really uh, battle, uh, we couldn't appreciate the mountaintop as we should. So this life, maybe we've got one more mountain to climb, one more valley to cross. Maybe we have a lot more. But you know, God wants you to have the fullest life and abundant life in this journey that Pastor Nicky's always saying that we're on a journey and heaven's our destination. Why not enjoy and, and get a little taste of what heaven's going to be like right now. Amen. I hope you'll enjoy this song before I bring the message. It's called Go Rest High on That Mountain. And Pastor Nikki is going to help me with her violin.
Pastor Nikki, would you hand me my Bible, please? I sure would. I love that song. Sort of reminds me of how I feel about this mountain. I love this mountain and what it stands for. I love the fact that God, thank you. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that God sent me to this mountain 15 years ago to build him a house. And we built him a house. Glory to God. We didn't have it built, but me and a few other men, we built it. And we built it to honor God. Amen. And we've had some wonderful times in that little place we call God's house. God has put it on my heart today that we have lost something I'm talking about Christians. We've lost something. We got too comfortable. The pews and the music had to be just right. And we needed programs. And we forgot that it's the Spirit that gives us a worship service and not the programs and not the schedules. And God has been dealing with me that we need to get back to the basics. I'm talking about the church. I'm talking about Christians. I'm talking about ministers. I'm talking about pastors. I'm talking about the, the uh, people, the clergy in the church. That we need to get back as a Christian, back to the basics and what God has called us to do. We have got so modernized that we forget that when the Spirit works, miracles happen. Amen. We don't see many people even getting saved anymore. All we hear about uh, someone that had a great gathering or a big mega church, and people, uh, they'll walk up and, and, you know, they know their own camera. And, and, and you know, I, I don't want to put that down, but I want to say that we have lost something, and that is the moving of the Spirit of the living God. Amen. And so I, I went to the book of Hosea in the Old Testament. And in the sixth chapter, I want to read you a verse or two. And maybe, and I'm praying, that this word of God will sink into our spirit and we'll realize what serving God is all about. It's done by the Spirit, beloved. It's done by the Spirit. The Bible says that God is a Spirit and those that want to worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And first of all, you've got to be born again and the Holy Ghost will move in. Then there's a time of sanctification. There's a time that God, the Holy Ghost, works on our bad habits and the way we think. And, you know, sometimes God works quick in some people. Sometimes it seems like I'm talking to myself. He's just always a working, and it ain't fast enough. But then there's a time to be filled with the Spirit. And that's how you get to know God. It's when you are filled with the Spirit. I, I just love, I just love our gathering in our community church up here. Because we have people from different denominations, and that's great. But everybody has been taught that we're a community church. And we respect each other. But we do not and will not quench the Spirit and we will not disobey God to please denominational doctrine. And so, in Hosea, the Bible says in the sixth chapter, Hosea would be a good book for, for all of us to reread. Yes. <coughs> Come 
and let us return unto the Lord. Beloved, I'm sure many of you are saved, really born again. But we sort of drifted away from following the Spirit and understanding that to walk with God, it has to be in the Spirit, not in the flesh. And only through Jesus Christ can we come into the throne room of God. Amen. It's Jesus that saves us, forgives our sins, and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. God wants us to go a step farther. And that is to hunger and thirst for the Spirit of God to move in us, to fill us up. Like the old song, I'm drinking from my saucer because my cup's overfilled. You know what many of us need to do? We need to get back to asking God to fill our cup up. We're trying to serve God, and our cup is empty. Amen. And it, you can't drink from your saucer till your cup is filled up. And it won't get there by programs and, and singing a verse over and over and, and singing and, and, and thinking that we can conjure God down with all of our singing and all of the... Listen, singing is great, but the Word of God is what brings the Spirit into action. And we need the Word of God more than we need anything. Amen. That's how you worship God in spirit and in truth is to get into the Word. Hosea said, Come and let us return unto the Lord, for He hath torn. Are you listening today? Yes. I said, Are you listening today? Come, let us return unto the Lord, for He hath torn. And he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. Sometimes we wonder, if God is such a good God, why did he allow this coronavirus to hit this whole world? Maybe it's because we have drifted away, and we call ourselves God's people and we're happy to go to church on Sunday and sing a few songs and then go back home and then live in the world the rest of the time. Maybe the reason that we have been smitten with this plague is that we need to turn to God. And the Bible says He will heal us. He is smitten and He will bind us up. The only way I know for God to bind us up is to repent of living in the flesh and not in the spirit. Amen. The spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. And those of us that are truly saved, we, we've got to get back to living by the spirit of God. Amen. Things is not going to make us happy. Possessions is not going to bring fulfillment. Money in the bank is not going to bring us the satisfaction of a walk with Jesus Christ. I, I've preached many times, how much is enough? How much is it going to take to satisfy you? We buy something new here and something new there. And I was just thinking about that, our little 2005 church van that we haul our music in, <coughs> that we drove up here from Florida. We drove up here and had it loaded down, 2005. And we've been having a strong gas uh, vapor fumes for about a year now. But it was so bad coming up. And I said, God, you gave me that van. If you want me to have something different, that's fine. But if not, I'd just like to get this van fixed. So we took it to a reputable place that we have that we've been dealing with for a few years and they dropped that gas tank and they found the problem the fuel pump that bolts to the tank was cracked and bad god got us all the way up here you see folks i want to tell you when you seek god you're going to get to see him work in your life they got that fixed and i was just telling pastor nikki today 
she got in it and moved it around and no no smell of gas and everything and they rotated the tires and balanced everything changed the oil and filter checked everything out checked the cv joints and checked the motor mounts and they said everything looked fine and i thought you know what lord when you when we walk with you we we learn to be content amen and you do God would do little things to show you He loves you yes. and that you're pleasing unto Him. Yes. I want to thank Him for binding me up and for taking the broken pieces in my life and making me whole again. I want to thank Him for showing me what life is really all about. Amen. And I, I could never thank Him enough. I don't know when He's going to take, take us home. We have a place in Salt Springs, and we have a place up here on this mountain. I know not when or how, but I just thank him and praise him for this mountain here. I want to tell you, I can sit here, and I can swing, and I can look out there, and I can really draw nigh to God because you have to find a place where the Spirit can move in your life, and you can't do it with people always around. You have to find a prayer closet. You have to find a place where you can really get in touch with the Spirit of the living God. Amen. The Bible says in the third verse, and I'll stop there, Then shall we know. <laughs> you know, we're walking in such uncertainty now because the plague that has come upon the whole world took us all by surprise. We weren't prepared for it. Most of us was not prepared for it. I just want to thank the Lord. I got two brand new knee replacements during all of this. And that I'm on my feet good and doors is opening up everywhere and God is showing me that He's still God and that He knows how to take care of His people and if we will seek Him, we will find Him. If we knock, it will be open. And if our heart is pure before God and we've learned to be content with whatever we have and we say, God, I just want more of You. I've got everything else that I need. You have supplied my need, but I need more of You. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Yes. I want some of that fire to work in my life. Amen. I want to see being able to, to pray with people and to touch people and to see them healed. I want to see God do great things through my life. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. Amen. You know, that's why we're in a mess. We've stopped. God's people have stopped. Not everyone, but most of us. We, we just got into playing church, playing religion. But we need to follow on to know Him. Getting to know you. Getting to know all about you. His going forth is prepared as the morning, and He shall come unto us as the rain as the latter and former rain unto the earth. I want that rain. I want that Holy Ghost and fire. I want the power of God. I want to be able to drink from my saucer because my cup is full. And I want to be able to make a difference for the kingdom of God. And we need to have that hunger and thirst in us just like, you know, we get hungry for food. Oh, Pastor Nicky. <laughs> Pastor Nicky, right before... We, we come on, Pastor Nikki. She made the best hot dog, and brought out a hot dog with mustard and onions, and she brought out a great big ear of corn for each of us. Put butter on that corn, little salt and pepper, and I'm telling you, it was so good to sit in our swing and look out over this mountain and enjoy the simple things. We got to get back to the basics. We got to get back to what worked in our life. Appreciate the small things. Yes. Appreciate Jesus for his sacrifice. Yes. You know what? We still putting him through hell. We sure are. After all he's given us and after all he's done 
and he looks down, sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. He's looking down and seeing us drift back into the world and away from him. How it must break his heart. You ever thought about that? Yes. Jesus cares about his church. Yes, he does. He opened my eyes, really opened my eyes about Nikki. I need to love her and take care of her as Jesus Christ loves the church and takes care of the church. I want you to know that when we get away from God, God's judgment has got to come because we belong to Him. That's right. And if He don't deal with us with judgment, then He's not a merciful God. He's not a righteous God, and He came and died for nothing. And He didn't do that. So we belong to our Heavenly Father and discipline Something that's lacking in the younger generation. Discipline and appreciation to our God and repenting and being willing to change and asking God for help. We need to ask God for help. There's nothing wrong with whining to God. And there ain't nothing wrong with it. I whine to Him all the time. I'm sorry, Lord. Pastor Nicky can tell you, My words in our prayer before we go to sleep every night, God, forgive me for the way I've failed you today. Forgive me, Lord. And so I say this to you today. I say this with all the love in my heart. We need to get back to God. And we need to realize what's happening There's so many of God's people that don't know which end is up right now. I can tell you which end is up. Our hands towards our God. And we're walking in victory, not defeat. That's right. And we don't need to keep purchasing stuff trying to find happiness. Amen. Oh. Oh, I pray you got something out of this message today. Amen. I'm going to ask Pastor Nikki to get uh, her violin. She's going to finish his song. But first, I want to give you the invitation. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you better get right. You better get right. Oh, I'm not threatening you. I'm not hollering or spitting all over the place. I'm just saying, Jesus will save you and change your life. Amen. Would you come to him today? And Christian, would you go to Hosea, the sixth chapter, and read that? God will, when we turn to him, he will bind up the brokenhearted and send us the latter rain. Amen. Amen. I want that latter rain, don't you? Yes. It seems like it's trying to rain on us now, but you know what? I want some of that Holy Ghost rain. (laughs) I want to be able to cast out devils. I want to be able to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. I want to be able to make a difference in this sinful world. Amen. And that's what we all should want. Amen. I'm going to get Pastor Nikki to close this out today with the song that says, I would not be denied. Get a hunger and thirst. You'll be glad you did. He will. He will.
Bye for now.